Normally, in a, a big band situation, you'd have four trumpets, four trombones, and four saxophones, and all that. So, uh, so it's just pared down really, and I've added French horns to it as well, two trombones, three trumpets, and uh, in, in, that, in that sense, it's miniature. Um, and I call it a miniature brass, you know that sort of thing. I sort of work on music all the time, I'm, I'm sort of uh, noodling away at the piano or thinking all the time. So I don't think of it as uh, hard in the sense of, oh, how do I make it? It's just, I just work at it until I feel it sounds like what I want it to sound like. Yeah. I do write with, with uh, players in mind. Uh, but I mean, in terms of the I suppose the orchestral parts of the music, that's sort of my thing, you know, what I'm sort of... Uh, I mean, I think all the music you're right is sort of autobiographical, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, and the stories behind all the, the tunes. But sometimes you write specifically for a band. Like, uh, for this band, I've written three, three pieces specifically for Mark. So, and then a few years ago, I wrote two or three pieces for Andy Schofield. A really good saxophone player. And last last time we did it, I wrote uh, a piece for Ian Dixon. So you know, we do very much think of the players. Well. But I've played with Mike a, a long time, and uh, the, the greatest thing about Mike is, is what he brings to the music. So, in, in terms of how I, I've heard Mike in many different settings as well, and played him in many different settings, so I've sort of had a good experience of Mike. And he, he just I basically write around him, you know, I'm not specific what I give him particularly, just put stuff around him and then he just sort of creates a thing with that. And he's, he's, I mean, he's not actually his day the rehearsal, but his contribution to it is very important because he does make certain things happen as well. <laughs> I met Ian uh, before the days of uh, jazz, uh, jazz works, Northwest Jazz oh, yeah, Works. Yeah. They used to be Jazz Northwest, oh, well, and they did a lot of tours of Django Bates and Steve Argoelles and Ian yeah. and, and those musicians from the, yeah. the Loose Tubes in which a lot of tours. And they came up many times, and I saw them then and was introduced. I didn't play, play them, but the first time I did actually play with them, I suppose. In fact, it's probably the only time I've ever played with them was in, on that recording. Mm. So, uh, you yeah, know, that's, that's really good. I mean, I'm a big fan of him. He's mm. a great player. You know. God, it's really, well, Balloon Man is one of my favourite records. You know, it's a really great album. Mm. The ultimate musicians, to me, are people like Herbie Hancock and Stan Getz, and, because they're just incredible. Uh, Improvisers and their great sounds, and whatever they do, whichever context they play, they're just fantastic, and that's what I aspire to. Really, if you could, you know, play in any context and sound that good, that's that's great. But in terms of her uh, writing music, I mean, you know, just many things really. I, mean, I think you know, obviously, you listen to a lot of music, and it all has some sort of effect on you. You, mm. know, and you take things from that and stuff. Mm. Yeah, but I, I do, that, at the moment, I, one of my favourite bands is a Bob Brickman's band, the New Arts Orchestra. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's very much uh, what inspires me with this music. Yeah.